Hi, this is Amy from Sharky's Floral and Greenhouse. I know you're used to seeing Scott, but I'm the other half. So I'm going to just give you kind of a behind the scenes of what we do on a daily basis. Uh, we've had a lot of people ask, what do you do in winter? Do you take a vacation? Do you watch movies? Do you just sit around and eat bonbons? And the answer is no. There's a lot to do in the greenhouse that you don't realize that before we even start planting that needs to be done. So let me reverse a little bit and give you a background of how we got started. So um, Scott's mom and dad, my in-laws, had owned the business as a TV repair business. And he would go around and fix people's TVs. And as the TV repair business went out, because TVs became more disposable, um, he started, she started selling flowers in a cooler for like Mother's Day and Valentine's Day. And that started progressing a little bit more and then he started planting plants for people and decided that he could actually make a living out of planting tomato plants early and different different flowers so they turned it into a full-fledged floral and greenhouse so normally I'm inside I'm the designer and I do the floral um, work as far as the fresh cut flowers and the green plants that are house plants and then Scott takes primarily care of open the greenhouse but I love the greenhouse and I like to be out here. So today, I stuck a note on the door because it's snowing outside. It's, there's a blizzard going on and there shouldn't be anybody at the door. But if there is, the telephone's up there and I have, I have it so I can hear it. And I'll run up and help them. But right now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you um, just the simple, we're making up baskets, getting these all these dripper lines um, filled up. And so I'm gonna show you what goes on with that because from the time that you see a hanging basket in the, in the pot for sale, there's a lot of times that it's been handled and a lot of different things that need to be done for it to become that hanging basket, um, such as getting the product, the boxes in, getting the product in, unpacking everything, putting the baskets together, filling them, etc. So I'm just gonna show you that today and see um, what happens and if you like it go ahead and subscribe press the like button give me a thumbs up I uh, will do more of these daily videos or videos of what we do on a daily basis um, but right now I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into it so come on let me show you what we do so you can see that storm is going on and I think we're supposed to get like eight inches. So Scott's outside taking care of the parking lot and cleaning up some of that snow so people can get through and, and just part of a task of keeping the place looking good. So I'm just gonna shut this door, let him get back to work, and I'm gonna stay in here where it's warm. So we've got a storage full of boxes and boxes have to be brought over, opened up, um, they're all hanging baskets, pots, containers. They've all got to be filled and somebody's got to do it. So, pretty simple. Unload your box and start putting together these baskets. Some of the fun stuff, if I can find my knife here. Some of the fun stuff is the planting. Some of the stuff that is just needs to be done is sitting and putting baskets together and this takes hours and hours and hands and hands so that's what I'm doing today is putting baskets together putting a few together filling them up on the soil machine planting them putting them out filling up more so separating out all the little wires and putting them in the holes here seems like it's a very easy task and it is it's just a matter of hand-eye coordination of not getting the wires all bent up so that the dogs can come in and out and visit us and walk around in the nice weather.
a certain way that these go in best so that they don't get all tangled up. And of course, in my first view, I'm going pretty slow on and I messed it up, but pretty soon I'll get into the rhythm and it'll go quicker. We use these nice metal hangers. Um, they don't pop in quite as easy, but that means they don't fall apart either. These can get quite a bit of wind and, and uh, weight resistant to them and still stay really nice. little tiny hole I have to put that wire in. As I age and my eyes go bad, this is going to get harder and harder. before we opened the greenhouses and started planting, I did do quite a few baskets up ahead of time. Um, I thought I had enough. I don't by a long shot. So here we are in the process of making baskets when I should be planting them, but it is what it is. So that's my double duty sign of I have to do floral. So I almost have a table full. These little discs here in this particular basket, um, it forms a little barrier along the bottom so that there's a little bit of a water reserve that if you overwater, it's collecting it a little bit and then will drain out rather than it just draining through right away. Um, it's just a basket that we've used for years and we really like uh, it's from Belden and they work really well for us. They're sturdy. Uh, we go with this mocha color so that it doesn't stand out quite as on white. A lot of people have, you know, beige houses or stone. Um, it kind of blends in a little bit. We like to have the flowers cascading out and over where, you know, your end result, you don't really want to see a basket. So we don't get too much into the decorative portion of the basket because we want our flowers to be up and out and around. Um, it's not really about the basket, it's about the flowers. So I've got quite a few on the table here. I'm going to take them over to the filling station and um, we're going to fill them up with soil and then we're going to go ahead and plant. So we'll do that. So this is our filling stage or filling bench. Um, we've got this big green machine that basically holds soil. So. Um, Scott will come fill it up for me and um, it has a big auger in there and it grinds it up and um, makes it a little bit lighter and fluffier for us to use and it's not so compact. Um, kind of loud, but this thing has been around for since my in-laws own this, um, so quite some time and it just, it's a beast, it just runs. So I filled up a few of these already. Um, normally I fill up the bench, but I'll just show you basically what I'm doing is filling the baskets after I put the wires on them. Um, this pretty plug is Bordeaux. It's a Proven Winners Super Petunia Bordeaux. Um, and it's a, it's a petunia that is a nice full one that we put in the 12 inch baskets. So I'm gonna put five of them in here. And for anyone who's scared about planting their plants, you can see there is you're caring for them by not, you know, pinching the leaves or really doing too much to them. I don't do anything with these roots. These are the plugs. Um, I'm just simply making a little hole with my thumb or finger and putting um, five of them to a pot. So this is a 12 inch pot. Um, this is a proven winner series. So they do, they are quite aggressive. So five is plenty for that. And then I just go through and 
plant them up. So I have them planted up, shaking them a little bit just to make sure that that soil is up and around those roots. Um, my next step is going to be, um, no, it's not ice cream. It's the Osmocote pellets that uh, Scott had talked about in a previous video. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and look for it um, on YouTube. So I just take a little bit, sprinkle them on, and get some of that Osmocote in there. It just gives them some of that nutrition starting. He's going to hit them later again with the Beat Your Neighbor fertilizer, but right now uh, we just like to add that. It's our insurance that once they go to the customer, at least there will be something in there. We're, we always educate them and try to tell them you need to fertilize them once a week, but it's just our little, we just feel like it helps. Um, so we can't just take these and hang them up because we won't know what they are. So next is tags and they don't come pre-punched so we get our workout with punching them and putting them on so you can see this is a labor intensive business as far as there's always some type of little job that needs to be done um, it's not just as simple as oh i'm going to go plant some plants it's go get the containers put them together fill them plant them make sure they have a proper tagging and then we'll take them into the greenhouse and hang them or put them on benches to bring them over to our other greenhouses. So I'm just gonna keep filling here and, and get these ready to go. I'm kind of a messy worker, so I end up at nighttime having to wash my clothes every day because they're just full of soil. Um, I don't mind that at all. I like playing in the dirt. Of course, sorry, Scott would not be happy. It is not dirt. This is soil. He always says, dirt's on the bottom of your shoes. This is soil. So I have three extra that aren't gonna fill these pots. So I'm just gonna plant those in a separate area and then when we go do some combo baskets, I'll use those up real quick. Um, these are just straight colors here. We find that sometimes when you get mixed baskets, if you don't pay really good attention to what you're pairing with each other, um, they'll either one, choke each other out or two, one will outgrow the other, and then the other one will just be a little bit more stunted looking, making your basket look uneven. So for these, this, this round, I'm gonna go with straight colors, and we have customers that, that love it, and so that's what we're gonna go with on quite a few of these baskets. Time to take them into the greenhouse.
each of these drippers are on a different line. So he has it set up that some are uh, 12 inch baskets, some are 10 inch baskets, and some are eight inch baskets. And we know from the watering videos, each basket requires a different amount of water. So he has them set up so they're designated lines. So that's why I'm kind of spacing them out here, bringing them down, and now the 12 inch pots are gonna end up going on a bench. And when it gets just a little bit warmer, or we run out of space back here, we have more greenhouses, but it's snowing out today, so we're gonna put them on this bench. Back to fill more pots. So um, once my tree is done, I wanna get rid of it and another job. Somebody needs to take that all out for recycling and for garbage. And to make sure that the tags that I had, sometimes I'll set them aside or if I don't have any plugs left, I'll just go ahead and, and take care of those and get those out of the way. Um, I don't wanna mix that up with my next grouping because after you start getting in a rhythm, you sometimes forget which ones you're doing and if you're not paying attention, you miss mark. Um, and that causes really not a big issue because the flowers are gonna bloom and they're gonna show their color, uh, but people wanna know the names of what they're buying. So we don't wanna mismark which plant it is. Um, some are from different companies and they have different um, suggestions or information on the back as far as how to take care of them and what they feel is the best spacing, light, etc. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of those and start in on my next batch. So these are again a petunia. It's um, Super Bell's Tropical Sunrise. I am so excited for this one. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's kind of like a yellow with, an, with a pinky orange kind of striping going through it. Um, I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. It's kind of got a, a yellow throat and it looks really full. So I'm gonna set my takes up here knowing that that's what I'm working on and start my planting. I did notice that my machine is almost out of soil. Um, I can do it myself. However, with lifting baskets and hauling them back and forth, I choose to ask Scott to come fill that for me it kind of shares on the back work of, of what's going on. Once he gets full tilt season, as far as right now, I think he's doing more of the um, ordering seed, ordering tags, making sure we have what we need um, for a little bit later on. Um, I call him up and he very happily comes and fills this for me. So I'm just gonna give him a call real quick. ask him to do that that way it gives him a little bit of time before I get done here ah my muscles just showed up so he's gonna fill up the hopper for us can we show him what inside of the hopper real yeah quick? absolutely So inside you can see that big auger in there. Um, so we go ahead and fill it up, not all the way to the top because that's a little bit too much for it, um, but he'll empty bags up into there. Go ahead and fire it up. Hands, Hands are clear. clear. Yep. So you can see how that hopper works for us. Um, it just helps us a little bit with the getting that light and fluffy and, and making it a little bit nicer for us to fill baskets with. We have that big beast of a machine. Scott's taking the bat, the bags of the um, Jolly Gardener soil that we use here at our place um, and cutting them open, filling it up and getting it all filled up for me. So we'd love to have a bigger machine and a little bit more straight line production, but you work with what you got, and this is what we have, and it's been working for us for years. Um, so this was built probably 40 years ago, and it's still been still been cranking since. And we've done very little other than the normal maintenance. But I was a little kid when this was built, so a guy named uh, Ed Richland built this, and it's I mean it's just kind of a 
engineering marvel. My guy can do anything with his hands. So it's been it's been working ever since. So and we haven't done hardly anything other than go through and uh, lubricate it every every once in a while. So, Not a job for the faint-hearted. You, you will get a workout. I don't know. People go to the gym and they pay to work out, and they can just come to the greenhouse and lift 50-pound bags of soil up in the machine all day long. So, but we got this pretty full now with soil, and we're doing hanging baskets. So, um, so we use just the one straight mix. But if we switch over to doing flats, um, I, I like to throw in some germinating mix and it just helps to, to lighten things up. Yeah, so sometimes I'll put uh, maybe three bags or four bags of our Jolly Gardener or the Sun Grow and then one one bag of the germinating mix when we're doing flats because it just it helps to lighten everything up. So, but right now we're doing hanging baskets so it, it's all good to go. Thanks Scott. So since I'm out here now and loading up the the hopper with soil. Well, you can see we've got a bunch of hanging baskets that Amy has been doing. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna water them first and then we're gonna get them hung up. Each one of these drippers is gonna have a hanging basket on it. So we have to do thousands and thousands and thousands of these. So we're gonna do this, put them up, start the whole process over again.
All right, keep, keep going until this entire greenhouse, until all these drippers are filled. And today, well, you can see what it's doing up top here. Yesterday it was 96 degrees in the greenhouse. It was it was cold outside, but it was sunny. Um, but it was it was hot in here. Well, not so today because today we're getting about a foot of snow. So you can see that snow is starting to really pile up outside. We just got blasted by a big storm last weekend, and now we're getting it again. So you can see that the the heat from the greenhouse is melting the snow and it's sliding off kind of like a little apple little avalanches and all of a sudden it'll let loose and go and then it piles up outside so after i'm done hanging hanging baskets i'm gonna have to plow our parking lot because we got probably eight inches of snow already so i'm just finishing up watering the basket that I planted um, so that we can have them drink a little bit and then we're going to put them all up on the racks. Scott's still out plowing, so I'm going to wait for him to come home and um, then he, the two of us will work on it. But the sun's going down, it's going to start getting dark out here and that means it's going to start getting colder. So we're going to close the curtain up, try to keep this as warm as possible so that those heaters as they're running doesn't have to heat stuff that we don't need heated. Um, and I'm going to head in, get washed up, and go cook some dinner so he has a nice hot meal because uh, I think he has a long night ahead of him of plowing some few different properties that he needs to take care of. <laughs> 